I'm Eric Bloodaxe, and you're watching Combat Insiders. Watch it or fucking die. Hey guys, welcome back. Combat Insiders here. Nick Portella over there. Joshua Furs over here. We're here with Eric Bloodaxe Olson. What's going on, brother? Uh, not much. So... Uh -oh. <laughs> my my first question, if we get to everything else, my first question, Blood Axe. Where, where did you get that? Where did that come from? All right, so that nickname was when I got out of prison at 25, I joined a local kickboxing gym, mm. and I wanted to fight kickboxing. I'd never fought kickboxing before. I'd only fought amateur boxing. Um, it's funny because it's not the nickname I wanted. Everybody wants a nickname. I wanted the nickname Eric the Red after the Viking, Eric the Red. Mm. But my email was ericbloodax88 at AOL.com. The coach, Andy Filardo at that gym, who was like my main coach, who taught me everything about kickboxing and a lot about boxing, he didn't know my last name when he matched me for my first kickboxing fight. So he told the promoter, use his fucking email name. And they put <laughs> Eric Bloodax on the fucking thing. And I looked at it, and I was like, what the fuck is that? They're like, well, we didn't know your name. I'm like, how do you not know Olsen? I mean, it's Scandinavian, so it's the same. I mean, right. base, base from the same region. It's a Viking last name. So when he did that, they put the name, and it kind of like become like a cult following, more or less. Like mm. People like hearing it and saying it. And then with the way that I fought that fight and a few kickboxing fights, like it stuck. So then it was, oh, Blood Axe, Blood Axe, Blood Axe. I don't even get called fucking Eric in the fight scene anymore. And I don't even make that nickname. That wasn't me who did that. Like, it wasn't, oh, this is a cool Viking, like, leader. My, they just didn't know my last name, so they put that down. It's, Isn't that the best way to get it, though, when it's just kind of branded on you? Yeah, 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 I, I agree. I mean, I don't agree with making one's own nickname. but um, And then, like, over the years with the way I can get with people, and uh, he was a real person. He was a Viking king who invaded England and killed, like, eight of his brothers with an axe. Mm. So, well, there's that. reading about shit like history, I was like, oh, that's... If I had a brother, probably the way it would end for that motherfucker if I wanted the <laughs> fucking life insurance or something for my family. Um, so, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah, it was cool, and then my mentality with fighting has always been I fought everybody... Any weight, any style. I fought K1 at 265 pounds with me being fucking 195, my opponent. Wow. And then two weeks later, with a half-broken hand, fought an MMA fight. I didn't even train MMA at the time. I got my face knocked in, but I still gave it a good fucking go as an amateur. And then three weeks later, I'm fighting fucking Muay Thai at 215. I'm not even training Muay Thai at the time. I'm simply just boxing. Just like, ah, fucking bring it. Who's, who, why, why, where are we at? Well, fight everybody, whatever. So, I, I figured it, like, flowed with the whole thing. I'm it's thinking so. Now, because now, <laughs> now I'm invading England constantly and beating English people in bare knuckle boxing. I've seen this. I'm fulfilling my destiny. Yeah, we were, it, it's, it's funny, the whole, the whole Blood X thing, because, like, uh, you know, me and Nick, we're, we're, we're getting ready to do this show where it's almost kind of like a, not a gag, but it's just kind of like a little, uh, we're having some fun with nicknames, right? So the different yeah, fighters yeah. and all the different nicknames. And so, like, the, the whole premise of the show is, would you face that fighter just solely based on their nicknames, right? So, yeah, like, you're, you're a no. You're, 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 you're like, in the top ten. Just blood acts alone, your nickname. <laughs> like, we have a guy called the fucking Kraken. Like he's he's in the top ten. You're in the top ten. That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah, like there's there's a few guys that like you know would you face this guy based off his nickname? And uh, yeah. when we heard Blood Axe, I'm like fuck that. I don't care if I've never seen you before. I've never seen you fight. If I'm standing matter. in the ring and I hear my opponent's name, the fucking Blood Axe is coming to the ring. I'm out. Bro, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm going. I like that nickname, the Kraken. Yeah, it's, That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, yeah Juan, good. Juan Adams. He uh, he fights for the UFC. His nickname is. And he's just, nice. he's a big fucking dude, and uh, he his name fits him. He's a big motherfucker, and he's just yeah. He just fucking beats the shit out of people. But anyway, I've never seen him fight, but I'm gonna look him up now just on the nickname alone. I look him fan. up. He, he puts there you go. He puts guys to sleep, man. He's he's uh, he's a legit heavyweight. He's a big guy. Yeah. Um. 
So I guess touch up on you kind of touched up on it, man. So you know you've kind of dipped in a little bit of everything, like you said, Muay Thai, boxing, yeah. kickboxing. You've done everything. How did you even get uh, you know first involved into? You said you were in the boxing first. How did you even get started into all of that? Boxing, I started doing. I think what. I started wrestling when I was about five, six years old in first grade. Something the English can't understand because they can't wrestle. But I was in grade school and they had it like, get your fucking mom and dad. I was like 1988, 1989 to sign a piece of paper. You could be part of the wrestling team. I'm like, okay. So they did. And you know the way it is in America. Wrestling. Yeah. Um, I did that for years. Like tournaments, midget novice tournaments, whatever it is. And then when I was like... 10 maybe even nine ish i seen an amateur boxing fight and was like i want to do that and my dad was like all right so he took me down to a local boxing gym and they didn't go easy they proceeded to punch my face in like Mm. 10 years old with the fucking older kids that are like 13 12 that have been doing it and i started amateur boxing and training and uh then we ended up moving from new jersey here to long island and I just was something to do to try to keep me out of trouble. But it didn't keep me out of trouble because I would just use it anytime I had an argument in the fucking high sc- uh, grade schools or anything. Double jab, box someone's head off, shoot a double leg, smack them upside down. So it got me in a lot of trouble. But they tried to level it out, like send me to the PAL in Westbury or uh, the Westbury Boxing and, and this and that. So I was doing that when I was very, very young. And then they like denied me at doing any of it because I kept using it on everybody over like arguments in the lunchroom. Mm. Fucking hit a blast double on somebody and like hit them with a right hook. <laughs> so that's how I got into that. And then my whole teens was spent just chaotically locked up and in trouble and overly medicated. And my early 20s was spent chaotically locked up and overly medicated. Then I graduated to prison, got out when I was 25 and said, fuck this shit, enough of this. I want to do some fighting again, legally, and not get arrested for anything. Found MFA Academy, which is a kickboxing gym slash boxing gym. Mm -hmm. And I went down there, and I was like, well, I got all these amateur fights when I was like 12. You know what I mean? Like, boxing in between, like, extremely novice. I'd like to do some kickboxing. And and the coach is a no-joke guy. He's like, all right, show up. Prove, Prove to me you're serious. I'd never thrown a kick in my life. And now all I like to do is kick people in the fucking legs. And, and that was that. I started doing amateur for a while. And then I got about 55 fights, if you mix with my amateur boxing fights. But most of my fights are all kickboxing. I mean, I would fight every month, twice a month, er- on every card all over the island versus everybody. Um, and then I just said, ah, fuck it, I'm going to go pro. And yeah, that's what started all that. So the, a real good question, and you, again, you kind of mentioned it. You said heavily medicated. Now, I've talked to you about this before. Being yeah. bipolar, does it help or hurt you, do you think, for fighting? Oh, it hurts. It hurts because – so when I when I say heavily medicated, they locked me up when I was – they, they, they started drugging me up at 9 because I was getting too wild in school. Then I got locked up when I was 11 in a place um, called Sagamore Children's Center. No, excuse me. Before Sagamore, it was South Oak Psychiatric. And they give you heavy antipsychotic medications to try to drug all the kids up, like chemical straitjacket them. Right. And uh, it works, but you see, your mind is still functioning. I want to kill everybody. No, it doesn't help. Um, because one minute I can be good with somebody, and then the next minute I'll get a fucking idea in my head. Like, I'm pretty good right now. I feel okay right now. But I'll get an idea in my head on, like, a promoter or something. And the next thing I know, it'll kick around. And the next thing I know, I'll speak to him. And I'll be a prick. So then it kind of can change shit up. The same thing with fighters and other gyms. I could be good with somebody. Somebody will say something, and I'll be like, what the fuck did he mean by that? And it'll sit there for about a week. And then next time I see him, what did you say? And then it kind of destroy the whole relationship. But whatever. Mm. Yeah. But for the actual uh, fighting part, does do you feel like when you're actually fighting, when you're suppo- allowed to do that, does it actually kind of fuel the fire? No, when I fight... At my best, I don't feel anything. When I start feeling emotions, anger, rage, oh my God, I'm at Bellator because I fought on Bellator. How many people are looking at me? This is cool. This is weird. No, that fucks me up. If I, 
I'll feel like a click in if I get hit a lot, like in the middle of the fight, which is weird because I really don't get hit too much. Then I'll blast forward. But if I don't control my emotions, it kind of like drowns me. But it's never really kicked on in the fight. Outside of the fight, yes, where I've been trying to flip judges' tables and go at fans that I was cool with a week before. Yeah, that, that, that could be a headache. Anything that involves that, because like one minute I'm okay, the next minute I'm up for like two days, like thinking like I'm going to kill that motherfucker when I see him. Doesn't help when I'm fucking do, working normal jobs either, when I can't sleep. I don't take any medicine anymore. <laughs> I probably should, but I don't. I don't know, man. I've been privy to the medical world, and sometimes, I don't know, I've, I've seen people do worse on yeah. medicine. Oh, it fucks you up. I don't agree you're, with Because you're, you're not you anymore. Like, yeah. you're calm, yeah. but you're like a zombie. You know They've had saying? me on everything from the age of 9 to 18. Haldol, Tegretol, Neurontin, Depakote, Lithium, Prozac, uh, fucking Zyprexa, Vilify. I grew up on that stuff. Right. So when you come off it, your brain chemicals, I, they should have been hitting me with LSD. It would have been safer. Uh, <laughs> Yo, you ever, yeah. you, ever, you ever tried, like, CBD oils and stuff like that? You ever tried, like, natural stuff? Um... Well, weed, like, I've never tried the CBD oil, but I I don't really, as far as weed goes, yeah, I've smoked weed a few times, but only Eric, it has a horrific auditory and visual hallucinogenic effect on me. What? Like, yeah, so anything CBD related, I hear weed, like THC oil. I got given a lollipop by my girlfriend, like, four years ago on Halloween that was, like, 800 milligrams of pure THC extract oil. And it sent me into like a two day horrible fucking like anxiety <laughs> fucking trip. It was a bad well, night. C B D oil is the stuff if you just buy straight C B D oil, it doesn't have yeah. the it doesn't have the THC. It doesn't have okay. the all it does it has the other properties, but it doesn't have the, oh, the relaxation. Right. It doesn't have the hallucination shit. All that the trip part is gone. It's just okay. straight up yeah. relaxing. I don't know, just look into it because a lot of people yeah. um you know, like people with anxiety or, you know, things like that, like it really helps them. Uh, yeah. It's it's it supposedly it's it's pretty good. It's a, it's a good I, ta- I take it. I take I'll, it. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Like with anxiety, I don't really have anxiety. I just randomly will get these ideas in my head that everyone's fucking with me. Mm. And most of the time people are because I'm my own manager. I got to deal with every promoter, every gym. And I can tell you now, 98, I'm not crazy, but I'm crazy. And 98% of the time. You got a promoter, not naming any names, but you won, and then the gym, and they're telling each other something, then I'm being told this, then I find out about this, then it's this, and it's like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Try to fuck me out of money, try to set it in their guy's favor. So, and then I just start to get a little pissed off about it. I just can't deal with a manager, because if I have a manager, then I'm going to end up yelling at him. Yeah. So you manage yourself, it's easier. Yeah. So yeah, I, actually wanted to, I actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about your bare knuckle fights. I'm glad you sent sure. over the videos. I went back and watched them. One sure. thing that I did notice is you don't really get hit much. No. Why? What is it about you that makes you like so elusive as to where most of the fights you watch, everybody's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't I, – I don't know. What, it, what is it about you? I think it's two things. Um, one is obviously my style of boxing is different. And two, the way I look. People expect, when I used to have the mohawk, the tats on right. the head, the throat, the hands, people expect me to be a brawler. They expect me to tuck my chin or keep it in the air and just blitz you. It's not how I fight. It's no. never been how I fight in the street, in prison, in jail. I am technically based. I'm mm-hmm. not the best in the world. I'm not sitting here saying I'm no fucking Galati Ganofkin or anything like that, but mm. I will focus on the counter punch because I know it's harder. If I hit you and you attack me, it magnifies for my, my strike, and I just have a good sense of body movement. So if someone throws a double jab right hand and I parry double jab, I slip the right hand, they're going to usually come back with a left hook or if they're really slick, maybe a right uppercut, but most people don't throw doubles on the same side. And I, I can feel their body maybe like a second before it shifts, I guess all the wrestling, and I can just roll with it or go with it. So in the bare knuckle, you got to think, we just have these little two knuckles in front. If you hit me with these two knuckles, you'll break your hand. You hit mm. me with these two knuckles, you still might break your hand if I duck my head into it. But this is so easy. Now, a boxing glove is big. Mm. So with a little target, I'll wait for the punch, and I'll slip, and I'll hit. Slip, slip. 
I'm big on like staying in one place and slipping and then moving. It's been very effective thus far because in my past fucking five fights, I think I had more issues with getting a little bruise from the person's shoulder or head hitting me by mistake than an actual punch. Yeah, well, I, I, you're, you're four, so you're four and three, and I actually want to touch on that too. Your four, your four wins were clear. There, there's yes. nothing to dispute. But didn't you cut like twenty pounds in like one day or something wild? That was uh, I won that one too. Yeah, um, that's yes. So yeah. what what they do over in in the BKB is Jim Freeman Dove, the promoter, and he's not wrong. He says dehydration is the biggest enemy of combat sports. Okay, I, cool. I agree. Um, so he has the same day weigh-ins. So these guys in England. It used to be by a stone, so 14.6 pounds, you were allowed to be the difference. Now they cut that in half to about four or five pounds. Still good, but me, I walk around like 200, I train at like 230 pounds, and I'll fight at like 196, 205, 185. That's over here, because I know I can bring my weight down and I'll do a water cut, and I'm good. Right. But over there, I can't do that. But one time, it, it wasn't working out for me. And I was like a week away and I was still 15 pounds heavy. So I just said, ah, fuck this shit. I'm going to eat everything I want. And I did. And I was like 20 pounds heavy then, like a stone and then some. So then I had to be like, well, that's that's all she wrote. So I just strapped on the sauna suit. I stopped eating for 48 hours, no water for 36, sat in salt bath, sat in the sauna, and just ran on the, on the, th on, on the treadmill, sweated it all out, got down to 180, 181 pounds. And uh, weighed in, and I was dead. Then I went and ate, and I drank, and then hours later I fought. But I hadn't re rehydrated, which is why I sucked so bad in that fight. But, you know, as bad as I sucked, the guy couldn't put me away, and he was fine. He didn't have to cut anyone. I don't even know how you walk away from a 20 pound. That's a big weight cut, man. That's I hated him. Huge. If I didn't dislike him, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I, fe I still feel like I broke something in my body. Yeah. But, like, it, it hurts. Uh, something, something I find fascinating, uh, of all the people we talk to and just all the different fighters, you know, across the board, people that have that wrestling base seem to have the, uh, I, I guess, the toughest mindset, so to speak. I, I mean, do you think that's, you think that's fair? Again? To, you think it's fair to say, um, like, people with a... Josh, you froze, buddy. Don't worry, we could cut this yeah. out. I'm, it's okay. Can you see me? Oh, now you're yeah. back. I can hear you. Am I, I good? Hear you. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I was just gonna say, like, uh, you know, people that have that wrestling base, right? All the all these different fighters that have that wrestling background uh, in their blood, man. Do you find that those guys seem to be the have the toughest mindset for this? Yes. You know, you know even if it's even if it's not, even if they're doing kickboxing, they still have that yeah. wrestling base. Oh yeah. In them, I agree. Do you, do you think that that is the best base to have in, in terms yes. of really any martial art? Yeah, for fighting in general. Because I'll tell you right now, I'll fight anybody under the sun, but if you tell me I'm fighting like a wrestler, who he doesn't even have to be good, just got the ears that look like he's from Lord of the Rings, yeah. Yeah. I know that anything I do to him, he's just shutting out, and he's just going to keep firing singles and doubles until he dies, until I knock him out, or until he gets it. So they're just, yeah, I, I agree with that. See, they don't have that in England. They don't wrestle. I'm not saying they're not tough, but when I prepare for fights, I like to do nothing but grappling. Mm. Because if I can roll and wrestle with you for a half an hour, seven-minute rounds, whatever it is, yeah, how fucking easy is it to box five two-minute rounds or you right. know, five three-minute rounds? It's, yeah, but no, I, I agree with you on that. I'm a big fan of grappling, and I'm not great at it. I'm good enough that in Bellator, the purple belt that took me down, I actually won the grappling exchange and then got TKO'd with the punching <laughs> mm. and caught strange because of all my fucking punching. But yeah, so yeah, no, I agree with you on the, on the, on the wrestling aspect. Uh, with the, the bare knuckle side, as far as gloves or no gloves, what are the differences you think are uh, in terms of getting punched and then punching uh, in terms okay. of, in terms of, um, do you feel like you take more damage in bare knuckle versus gloved or you do you feel like gloves you more risk? The glove's more vicious. So, the way I explain to people is this. If you want to get a cut that looks cool, it doesn't really do anything to you, do bare knuckle. If you want to get a broken bone in your face and brain damage, do glove. Mm. And the reason I say that is because in bare knuckle, you'll cut a lot easier. 
And I don't know. A lot of these guys, in my opinion, are soft. They'll get hit and they'll fall down. I've never. I've been hit. Get the fuck up. What are you falling on the canvas for? You. I'm not going down unless you put me down. I don't give a fuck if my face is hanging off. So you get a little cut. They stop it. But gloved. Think about it. I don't have to worry about my hands. They're taped. I got these cushiony 10 ounce gloves on. Yeah. I'm gonna hit you with 10 shots, peppering you, and then punch from like I'm trying to knock through a wall with all my might. I don't give a fuck if I hit you in the head a little bit because my hands are safe. Yeah. And bare knuckle, if you do that, you're going to break your hands, which is worse than getting your fucking face broken. So I think bare knuckle is actually the easiest as far as combat sports goes when it comes to physical injury. I'm not getting kicked in the legs. I'm mm. not getting elbowed in the face. Mm. I'm not getting suplexed upside down on a chain link fence, somebody putting a knee in my belly, mm. hammer fisting my face, and then trying to choke me unconscious. So I just got to worry about somebody punching me with no gloves on. I could do that up at the local fucking pizzeria on a Friday <laughs> night. <laughs> That's easy. And if you hit me, end, okay. I'd rather get punched in the face five times with no glove than hit with a knee to the liver once or kicked in the leg in a yeah. tie fight. That's facts. So now your three losses, I, I went back and watched them too. I kind of, I kind of want to go over to one. It kind of confused me. Um, okay. You had the lightweight title fight, Nathan Leeson. Leeson, yeah. Uh, you, I don't know. I don't know how the scoring is, or maybe the scoring is different there. But to me, um, clear win in the second round. You scored yeah. a knockdown. Third round, it seemed like the exchanges were even. But yeah. you got the better of the counter exchange. But I, okay. I really want to talk about the first round. To yeah. me, it looked like you knocked him down. Yeah. In the I first think, round. Yeah. I think the way it shows on video, though, is they deemed it a slip. slip. Yeah. Did you, did you feel like it looked on video like you connected and he went down? I know I connected. So in the Nathan Leeson fight, and I just want to state this because this will send a lot of people into fucking orbit when I say it. I don't judge that fight based off of my own judging. If you go by their judging, I lost. If you go by other people's judging, it was a draw. Other people's judging say that I won. Cool. I've heard from people, including a lot in Northampton, that say I won, it was a draw, he won. So I'm not taking anything away from him. First round, I felt he was outboxing me because he's a great boxer. He's a better boxer than I am. Um, and I hit him around his head with two hooks and he dropped. And I stepped back and he got up like a very fast, nothing convincing. And I thought, why isn't he getting called? Okay, cool. They didn't call the first round a knockdown. I'd assume they called it a slip because they didn't count them. But if you watch the round and if you watch the fight in its fullness, yes, I threw a double punch. It hits him and he falls down and he pops right back up. Maybe a flash knockdown, no problem. He doesn't look hurt or anything. Fair enough. And then that, that's, that's what I felt. I felt I won the first round. I felt I won the second round by two, obviously two points because I knocked him down. I floored him. And then I felt that he won the third round, the fourth round, and the fifth round. And I thought he won the fourth round very big by two points because I was fucking fucked and he was slamming on me. But I guess it really depends on how you would um, judge that fight to get the decision in his favor or my favor. And I'm not sitting here saying those guys suck at judging. I'm not saying that at all. Um... I didn't have an issue with it at the time. Uh, I don't have an issue with it now. Nathan's a good friend of mine, and I don't want to come off like someone taking anything away from the fight. That was my first bare knuckle fight, and he was undefeated. He had like fucking a ton of pro, not excuse me, a ton of gloved, unlicensed fights. So he was he was legit. But yeah, that that's how I see that that first round. I think I did knock him down, but I don't know. The way it looks in the moment is always different than when you're watching it on YouTube. You know, right. And your other two losses, both to Sean George. Uh, yeah, Sean. I, I feel I feel like I, I did. I went back and watched them and like tried to score it as yeah. if I I don't know anything about it and I'm just scoring the fight. I, I guess the rematch, the first fight I could see maybe close, mm -hmm. but like the second fight I felt you won too. Right. Just on points because well, you're very good at counter punching. Yeah, he, I like. He, he threw a lot of vo he threw more volume than you. Yes, but that doesn't mean the volume landed. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, I don't, I don't know. Do you, do you? I mean, do you kind of agree? You were there, obviously. That my opinion on the Sean, 
my opinion on the Sean George fights, and again, I want to say this because me and Sean had a lot of bad blood, but we were very friendly before the fight, and then we went fucking chaotic on each other. And then now we've become friendly again, so I have to make it very clear that I don't take anything away from Sean's win. I think Sean's a great fighter. I love watching him fight. I think he's cool. Right. I think the first fight in Newcastle, you can rule a draw. Or I won based off of damage because that's just my opinion. And again, Sean, if you're watching this, I'm not knocking you. I think you're a great fighter. It's not an insult to you. Just how I think we're both fighters. We have our own opinions. Right. I'm not sitting here crying about the loss. Whatever it happens, I'd rather lose to a good fighter than beat a bad fighter. So I can live with that. Um, and then the second fight, I think there was a lot of fucking just crazy fucking energy, which is one reason I got so tired. But, yeah, I marked him up more. Um, I think I won those fights. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you know, I won the Sean George fights. But if someone brings me up and asks my opinion, I'll say that. But I think our styles complement each other, and we put on some really great fights for the fans. Right. And uh, he's a very great fighter. He's very tough. I like him. He's also a Gemini like me, so we call each other Gemini Twins. Mm-hmm. And at the same go. time, if someone says I lost those fights, I'm not jumping down their throat. Okay, cool, I lost them. If you think I was at work, cool, because I was. He came forward more, great. Whatever you want to see it as, that's how I say it with that, because I don't want to, again, I I lost to Nathan Leeson, who's undefeated, and right. Sean George, who's like 9-3, uh, and three, I think, and his loss has come to some good guys, too. So, if that's the way people want to put it, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, yeah, I, I, I get it a lot from the fans. You know, between the fighters, we don't really sit there and hash over it. It's the fucking big mouth fans. Oh, you got, you lost. If I did lose to somebody, anyone, okay. Did you fight the motherfucker? No, shut the fuck up. Type it's of actually thing, like, funny, over there. It's, it's actually funny he brought that up. Because that was something I wanted to ask you about with the hardcore fan. Is it hard going over there as an American to to fight? Because it's like not your backyard. Because who's been over no. there? Joe Riggs, you. Yeah. I was Clark. on a card with Joe Riggs. We were hanging out in the back. Cody McKenzie. There's not a bunch that have really gone over there to compete. So it's kind of cool that you are over there. Do you feel like it's harder fan-wise? Oh, no, no, no. Actually, I get more respect than fans over in England. Even the enemy fans will come up after and offer to... Good thing I don't drink or I'd be fucking dead of alcohol poisoning. Offer to buy me <laughs> drinks. Even the, 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 the opponents. Over here, I'm really hated. Like, mm. over here, that's how I sell a good majority of tickets. Like, these people got a stigma about me over here. People want to see me dead. Over in England, it's that whole America versus England thing until they meet me. And I'm not exactly Mr. Patriotic. So, I don't care. I'm just there to fight. Right. Um, no, it's not harder. I get more respect from the English fans, even the enemy fans, than over here. Um, I've had people throw bottles at me over here after I won. I've had people try to spit on me walking out, and it's like, I'm going to kill you when I get done with it. When these gloves come off, I'm fucking stabbing you. And they'll leave um, literally like mini fucking riots over here. So over there, everyone's been real cool, even when they're not cool. It's, you're going to get spanked, you dumb yank, but you come over and fight. Respect. Have a beer. I don't drink beer. Get me a fizzy water type of so, thing. So yeah. it's kind of a, a fair trade. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Over there, I like the fans better. I also think it's cool when I hear all these different English accents yelling for me to lose. It's like I'm fighting on a pirate ship in, like, black sails. <laughs> do, That's do what you, it sounds like. Do you, do you tend to, uh, do you embellish, do you mind the whole, I guess, for lack of a better term, that... Uh, maybe kind of playing that heel persona and having people oh, yeah. throw shit at you? Like, do you kind of embellish it a little bit? Yeah. Well, well, here's the deal with that is people think it's an act or a gimmick. It's not. When I legitimately say something, I mean it. And when I don't like somebody, I fucking mean it. Yeah. So over in America, there's a lot of drama between me and a lot of gyms and fighters, fake fighters, passive aggressive fighters, fake gyms who want to pretend to be your friend. And I see things they say and then I go nuts on them. So when I start going, it's real. It's just, I will go to no limit. Like, my history speaks for itself with my interactions with my fellow man. So people will be like, oh, he's trying to be Conor McGregor. No, I'm not. I literally will be contemplating setting your house on fire and shooting you when you run out of it. Since I won't do that currently, because I got things I don't want to lose, when I'm at the fight and I come out and I see you with your friends, I want you to boo me because I want to murder you. 
Mm. And then your boy in the ring, even though I don't know him or I do know him, I want to kill him just to fuck with you. I get into it with the fans more than the fighters, actually. Well, They're like as, an extension of the fans, so yeah, I want to fuck them up for that. Because the fighters, you're going to fight. It's going to yeah. happen. You're there. Well, it's the fans so, drive me up a wall. So you're well-versed. I know BKB uh, and Jim. I actually really like Jim. Jim yeah, has Jim's been, cool. Joe's really yeah. cool, too. You never met Joe, but Joe's a good guy. Never met him, but Jim has been great uh, so far. And I'm trust me, I'm not trying to reel you away. But No, no. Let, let me say one thing. Let me say one thing. Sure. You want to talk about bipolar or anything? Ask Jim about his years of dealing with me. That poor guy. I've He's... I'll, like, message him, like, because there's a five-hour time difference. He'll be like, blah, 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 blah. And then he'll be like, what are you talking about? We agreed to something opposite. Like, I don't want that now. Now I want this. I want to move the fight nine fucking weight classes up. And he'll be like, mate, fuck off. Well, fuck you then. And then it's like, <laughs> we won't talk. And then with them, we're good. Now, Jim's my friend, and he's fair. But um, I, I put him through the ringer with my mood swings. And he'll know when it's coming. Like, he'll say something, and I'll just, yes. He'll be like, what's wrong with you today? And it's, I'm just like. I don't like what I'm being told or I think something else and then I go crazy. But continue with what you were saying. Well, and again, I like Jim, the promotion. They they have yeah. like a deep history. They've been doing it for a while. Has yeah. it ever crossed your mind, though, to maybe one time fight in your backyard since now bare knuckles a thing here? Um, No, because with, with UB Bed, see, they've taken such care of me. Like when I first came over, um... The first time I came over, I paid for my own flight because they didn't think I was really going to come. And then I paid for a random room to stay in with an internet friend. And I just walked around the town and said, oh, you're, I'm, I'm a fighter from New York. I'm fighting bare knuckle. I want to I train. They looked at that, and they Joe and Jim really took care of me for it. Um, over here, we'll call it for what it is, and I don't think you guys have any really if affiliation, so don't mind me. You have the bare knuckle thing that Lieben just fought in. Where nobody got paid. Now yeah, fighters are suing Boss Rootin or whatever. I don't know. But that's a bad look. Nobody got paid. You got guys getting promised like 50 grand and they've been paid nothing. Right. I know over there I'm always getting paid. And I know that they're helping me out. Then you've got this thing with Feldman. So Feldman and me, I don't know him, but I don't like what I've read about him. And again, anything you read about somebody is, is biased. But... There was some issues between people he knew and people Joe and Jim knew back when I was brand new to the company. So I told him to fuck off. And, uh, you know, they, at least Feldman's paying his fighters, right? But Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. I, I don't know about his history, but I yeah. can tell you from us covering his bare-knuckle events. Yeah. And from what we know from covering the events on... He's always been great with us. I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. I, you know, I yeah, don't yeah. know him like that, but... I just, as far as, so, and, and then it just comes down to, outside of being loyal and them always taking care of me, I mean, Joe and Jim have driven me from one hour, from, from one side of England to the next, and paid for my hotel when they could have been like, take a bus. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, I still also like the whole atmosphere of being a foreign fighter in England, mm. and uh, I'm not knocking any fighters here who want to fight on, right. on the American cards, but I think it's... Like I said before, when I'm in the middle of the fight and I hear, like, you know, the way they do that soccer football chanting yeah. over there? Yeah. yeah. And I hear that coming. I'm like, this guy, this is, it's, it literally sounds like like you're fighting in, like, fucking 1550 in, like, England. So I think it's cool. Nothing against the fighters here who choose to fight on that card. But to me, I'm UB bad through and through, and, and that's what I'm doing. Um, I like that. I, li I like it over there. And, uh, you know, it's not about money to me. Yes, they pay me. I get paid well. They cover my flights. They pay for my my uh, pay for my flights. They pay me, and they've even given me fucking bonuses. Fucking before, they they pay for my hotel rooms, food, everything. They're great to me. Um, but I'm not John Jones, so I'm not looking for John Jones money. I know that. Right. I think a lot of guys are like, oh, I came in America. Now I'm, give me ten grand to fight. Who the fuck are you to get ten grand? You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so that, 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 that's one aspect of it. The only thing I'm going to be doing, it looks like in the next few months is I'm, I'm going to Burma to fight Lithwi, the bare knuckle headbutting Muay Thai. I'm getting that set up with a gym over there. Wow. That sounds fun. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> He's all about it. Have you ever it. heard of it? I, I have heard it, but I never watched it, but it, it sounds like okay. you have to be the right individual to do that. I'm the right individual. For I it. feel, I, I feel like you might be, you might be there. Yeah. When, is, when is that coming up? There was a card. Today's February. 
there was a card in March. No. Yeah, card in March. After March, they're going to get me on another card because that card was all full. So then I'll fly over to Thailand, train, and then I'll go over to Burma. And do do you have don't you have something bare knuckle coming up? Oh yeah, January twenty sixth. All right, tell us about it, man. All right, so this is my biggest bare knuckle fight to date. I'm fighting Ricky the Birmingham Bull Nelder, who um, if you watch Ricky's fights, he's he's good. Guy's tough as fuck. His first bare knuckle fight, he I think he got his I think he fought with no mouthpiece years ago. Ooh. Got his teeth broken in the front, and he still fucked up his opponent. Like spit him out and kept going. That's so man Ricky, shit. Yeah, Ricky's no joke. Um, I'm friends with Ricky. Like, we talk in Messenger. I give him diet advice. We talk about fights. Like, we've been tight for years. Like, he's one of my favorite fighters to watch because Ricky's fought everybody. Guys, 30, 40 pounds bigger. Fuck it. Let's have it. Let's go. Um, I think me and him will make a great fight with his aggression and, and my counter punching. Obviously, I think I'm going to win. He thinks he's going to win, but there's no vicious hatred. I'm not going to be headbutting the guy like I did when me and Sean George had problems. Mm. Um, and yes, I headbutted you, Sean. I admit it 100%. I was aiming for that. I don't know how you took it, but you did. Um, so this is the next one. It's a five-round fight, and it's at 14 stone. So that's 196 pounds. So I'm losing the last 14 pounds now to get down because the same day weigh in. So I want to fly over to England with like, no weight to lose. I'm fucking hungry. I got to go to the gym and run soon. But, um, yeah, me and Ricky, five-round fight. And uh, if you ever watch his stuff, you can f- find it on, on YouTube, Ricky Nelder, Bare Knuckle Boxing. I think it'll be a real, real vicious fight. And, um, yeah, he's just got a lot of these guys in Bare Knuckle and MMA who say they want to fight everyone, and then they get a chance, and nobody wants to fight everyone. Ricky's like me, everyone, anyway. He fought Goran Relic who is the ex-UFC guy who looks like fucking something from a government lab out of Croatia. And he fights like one, too. You don't want to get punched by that guy. Guy's huge. And Ricky stayed in there with him uh, banging out. Um, So me versus Ricky in London at the O2, January 26th. I've sold about 20, 25 tickets so far over in England. And some friends over here bought just to support me. Ricky's probably sold all of Birmingham out. All the Peaky Blinders will be coming out. Uh... It's going to be a good fight. I can't wait for it. I I think that my boxing is going to be too much, and I think his aggression is going to hurt him. But we'll see. Um, May the best man win on the night. It's a fight that I think a lot of fans have wanted to see because you get a lot of these, I don't know, some of these these guys I've been seeing fighting that get new on the card, like I said, they fall down when they get hit once or twice. I'm not. He's not. You have to put us down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never taken a knee in a fight that wasn't earned. I've got 74 fights total, count my amateur and my pro career. And I've been knocked out, TKO'd twice, like literally down on the floor by crazy opponents. I've fought guys that are now main people in glory. I train with guys that are in Bellator, UFC. So, you know, I'm not going to sit there and, oh, I'm getting hit too much. It's time to take a knee to breathe. No, it's a fucking point of pride. When I say I've never been down in bare knuckle, been down in kickboxing, but you know, that's MMA. You, you got to live down, but it is what it is. <laughs> sure enough, you, you know what? I, I've got a question, a follow-up question to that, and I'm pretty sure I know your answer, but I, I guess I just, I just kind of want to hear it. So, uh, the questions I've asked uh, some of the, uh, a lot of the guys is. Uh,